Picking up this peg rail board was surprisingly, amazingly simple and easy. In fact, it was probably the easiest thing. No, it was the easiest thing that we did this week. I think we're all tired of cookie cutter, brand new built rooms that are sterile and bland and vanilla that have no character, no richness. And, and we've really lost that craftsmanship. It's like putting jewelry on a, on a classy old woman, right? She's, she's got her hat and her jewelry and all these things that make her classy and make her herself. So we're putting that back into this house and it's just the piece that was missing. made so much progress in this entryway mudroom laundry room makeover I'm so excited to share with you guys I feel like we've we've gone miles this week it's we've made a lot of progress we live in a 1918 old Victorian farmhouse this room is a totally new renovated but also vanilla sterile boring and plain room with all of its beautiful charm ripped out of it so we are going to be bringing all of the gorgeous old antique charm back into this room, putting up some original trimming in here, and we're also going to um, do a DIY peg rail board tutorial for you guys. Lucky for us, we have a barn outside that when they did the renovation in these couple of rooms, they put all of the trim, all of the doors, all of the pieces into that old barn. And so we are bringing them back into this room and it's amazing what it did to this sterile, bland, vanilla, white walled room environment. Oh, and if you are new here with me, if this is your first video, I want to invite you to not only subscribe, but go back to the further videos where I showed you how I designed this space and um, all the beginning steps to it. So this would be considered episode three of the laundry room, mud room, entryway makeover. It's a very, very small space with a very high function. So um, follow along with us. It's definitely not over yet. We really want to add the character that was in this original house back into it. So we've shined up these trim pieces that have been laying in the barn. This is so cool. Let me show you the contrast of, of what it looked like in the barn to what it looks like now after I've shined it up. So this is what all the pieces in the barn have looked like. They're covered in dirt. They're over a hundred years old. And they were put in this house in 1918, probably from a Sears kit that they used to send. They used to send people trim pieces and all the pieces to, to go to their house instead of having like a craftsman um, build their old houses. They used to buy millwork in kits. So I'm pretty sure that's how this house was put together. But look at the contrast. This is what was found in the barn. This is after some olive oil and a little bit of stain. Doesn't that look so nice? So I'm so excited. I know what I know what this room really needs is some of its original antique charm put back into it. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this up over the window. We're gonna trim out the window, add a little bit of trim work in here, and with all of the white and with the light sage green, this is really going to tie the space down and give it that contrast and balance that it needs. And 
the very last episode of this makeover, I added a shelf to go on top of the laundry machines, which I also intend to put a curtain underneath to hide those completely, but I can't tell you how amazing it is to have this shelf up here. I'm so excited to, to have storage up here to be able to iron and to fold. And this week I also added an additional little shelf on top of that. Okay, just wanted to pause this video to share some color wisdom with you. When you are going for a bold look or maybe you are going out on a limb with some color here and you're just not so sure about the color, I chose Nurture Green, which I loved here on my wall design, the stencil look that I have up here. It's Nurture Green from Sherwin-Williams and I really love how it just pops off the white gives it a little bit of depth. Um, love this color, but when I painted it on a trim board, it was much brighter. Something about having that, that green right up against that white just made it really pop. And so I decided to head over back over to Lowe's and went to the paint section and did a little bit of research. If you find yourself in the same situation where you're just not at peace with the color, do some research. If you have to stay within that same color family or find something that complements that color, um, try to see if you can um, pick up one of these booklets that they have here. This booklet has all of the colors that complement Nurture Green, which is right here. You can also go online, whether no matter what, what paint company you're working with, if you go on Pinterest or if you Google colors, if you Google that actual color, um, you can pull out complementary colors that go with it and, and go with that color scheme. I tried to choose a color that would complement what's up here on the wall because I am not, I am not changing what, what I've done up here. That was an investment of time and I love it still. But I wanted something that would look good with the trim pieces, okay? And that wasn't such a pop of color. So I decided to go with this Coastal Plain, which is much more of a sage. It's a little bit more earthy, much more calm, a little bit darker. Um, sometimes when you are working with a lot of light and bright colors, you need to push the contrast of dark even more to, to give it some balance. But just wanted to pass that wisdom to you that you don't want to put a color up on your wall or in your house that makes you kind of cringe and, and doubt every time you see it. Um, this is a way that you can work through the process and find something that is complementary and, and flows with the design that you're going with. My goal here is to start in the center of my board and work my way out. My other goal here is to have all of these pegs evenly spaced <laughs> um, so there's nothing wonky going on here. So um, now I know where the center of the board is. I'm going to start with the center of the board. I also need to figure out where the center of the height of the board is so that they're all, you know, in the middle of the board. Okay, my board is exactly four inches, so I know that it needs to be two inches is the center. This is going to be it. Okay, that's the middle. That's where this handy dandy chalk line comes into play. 
you know, the saying, get all your ducks in a row, I'm gonna get all my pegs in a row. We have so many things ahead that we're still wanting to do. Um, we brought in this big antique pocket door that used to be somewhere in this house. I've been trying to think of a way to use it. And when I couldn't find the perfect armoire piece that I wanted to go in here to use as a coat closet, um, I decided to use this as a hall tree. Um, I've got an upcoming project. We're gonna put up a boot peg rack, okay? Um, that holds all of the muddy farm boots and um, I think we need to minimize some shoe action here So there's gonna be a whole video devoted just to shoes a video devoted to the organization of the coat hall tree all of those things um, and Then of course we're gonna get to the fun the fun pretty parts like doing artwork and and making curtains and all of those beautiful aesthetics that go along with, with this charming room. But I'm excited to share that all with you, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Make sure you click that little bell button. I make one video each week. I usually come out here on the weekend, and I will catch you next time. Thanks for joining me here today. Love you lots.